How are you doing? Great, great, great. Welcome. Good to see you. For being the, good to see you. Thanks for being a guest today and even more than a guest. Um, basically, um, a forerunner in your own, in, 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 in all regards, not only in your own, but in all regards where um, society is concerned, community is concerned, and um, we're glad to have you. Uh, we call this the Mentality Show, and um, basically it's a platform in which uh, I created to speak about the mindsets of uh, forward thinkers and just the ability to uh, share with individuals ways forward. Um, and I couldn't think of a better guest to have at this particular time where education is um, at a critical crossroads and um, someone that could basically uh, talk about the way forward that definitely works, works uh, works in a way in which we personally and professionally are proud of. Our family are very proud of what you have there and wanted to have you on, welcome you and, and share some thoughts with you. Have okay. you share some thoughts with us. Sounds good. How's the family doing? How's the team and It's great. Everyone's <laughs> great. Everyone's great. Um, I, as you know, um, with college, um, there's the opportunity for, for the new students the, and, and uh, returning students to go to campus and do what we're doing here now online or stay at home and do online. And um, some have opted to stay home and do online. And I know Sac State started yesterday. So uh, amongst other things. But he's so, still home, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. He's on me studying here, yeah. Okay. So if you would familiarize the audience with what you do and what the school does so well. Sure. Um, you know, so we're uh, entering our 25th years of school. So this is a big, big year for us and uh, yeah. a school that's uh, been established from day one to really help all of our students to uh, be successful in, in not only going to college, but uh, being well prepared so they can succeed in earning their college degrees and uh, hopefully launching successful careers after that. So it's a, a long-term <laughs> kind of plan to um, create a foundation for students while they're in high school. Uh, again, hoping to really prepare them well for college and then continuing to support students' efforts while they're in college. Um, so it's a you know, long-term commitment. I found that to be a big, big, big factor. Uh, holding fast with uh, the educational pursuit of the students while they're in college. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's from high school through college. Um, mm -hmm. Eastside College Prep has a 100% graduation rate uh, for high school, as well as 100% college graduation rate, if I'm correct. 100% uh, going off to college, yeah, we, uh, with 80% of our students have, are in college have already earned their degrees. Um, so again, it's that, uh, but, um, you know, we do everything we can to, to support them. And uh, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, you know, college these days, there's a number of reasons why students may not uh, cross the finish line. And, you know, if you look at the national figures, it's pretty scary that uh, only about 50% of all students from all socioeconomic levels will finish college in six years. Um, for first generation college students, it's uh, only 11%. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's a real challenge. And, you know, for so many of our students, there's so many factors, whether it be financial, uh, whether it be, um, you know, tends to be less academic because I think students generally are well prepared for college, but, but there's the, you know, going away from home and just being away from home for your first time. And for most cases, in most cases, although because we have the dorms here on campus, for our students, it's not necessarily their first time, but uh, but for so many students, it can be just a, a challenge. That it's one of the you know, biggest transitions in their life up until this point. Uh, so um, you know, so we realize that it's not just the the academic foundation is really solid here, but it's all the other factors, kind of the social emotional factors that can be really challenging for all students. 
uh, during these formative years as they're entering adulthood and, and trying to figure out who they are, but also being on their own for the first time. And like you said, the socio um, psychological piece, the, the social piece, I read a, a piece that talked about social education. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that Eastside College Prep, uh, the school that you preside over, is big on social education. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helps a lot. And many of the students are first generation uh, college uh, aspirants. So therefore, um, the college preparatory environment really factors in heavily. It's a challenging curriculum. It's not easy, but they can do it. And though it's challenging, I think what balances the scale at East Side, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the immense level of support that's extended to each and every student to meet the rigorous curriculum with um, enough tutorials and just support all the way around the board. Definitely, I mean, I think that's our philosophy is to set high expectations, believing that our students can meet those expectations if given the right support. And so, but that support piece is, is critical uh, because it is, uh, you know, like you said, a challenging curriculum, a big step up for most students from eighth grade into ninth grade. So we wanna make sure that we give them all the best chance to be successful. And so we do that through a number of ways. Uh, the extended school day, which allows us to have these two tutorial periods a day where teachers and students can work together outside of class. I think that's been really critical to get the help that students uh, may benefit from on a daily basis. Um, as you know, uh, we've gone to year round schooling. So we have the summer session. So rather than taking the whole summer months off where there can be that learning loss uh, we're continuing to try to move forward and, and, and have students continue to prepare uh, on this path to college. So it's just extra time where they can really work in, along with earning college credits uh, for in, in the summer to get a head start for college. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the dorm program has, has another layer of support by allowing uh, students to get uh, academic support in another tutorial in the evening from the residential faculty members who live with and advise the students in the dorms. So I think there's all those layers of support that make a big difference. Um, but it all starts with the foundation that we believe each and every one of our students can be successful and be successful in meeting these high expectations, be successful in preparing well for college and being successful in college. But uh, you know, we all, so we all benefit from support <laughs> and uh, that's a critical piece of, of the formula um, to, to help students to be successful. I, I think that what is really commendable, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the students when they go to college have two academic support personnel to help them in through and beyond the whole four years that they're there. That's right. So we, we kind of pass the baton off from our teachers to our alumni services team at the end of senior yeah. year. So each graduate has is assigned a college coach and a career coach and so the college coach is there to help students uh, make that transition help them navigate their path through college uh, identify resources on their college campuses that can be helpful uh, be there just as a sounding board when there's challenges that they may experience um, and just helping to make sure that they're mapping out a, a plan we call it a roadmap to graduation to make sure that they're taking the best path to graduate on time um, and so that's really important. And then we realized probably going about 10, 15 years ago that, you know, the large majority of our students were being successful in college, earning their degrees on time, but there was still a wide range of outcomes after college. Uh, and mm -hmm. we found that one of the key difference makers was uh, work experience. Students who had had really meaningful work experience in the form of summer internships while they were in yes. college. And so we've now created this career pathways program and that's where this career coach kick, uh, start, um, plays a role where this each student also has a career coach who was working with them to start identifying areas of interest uh, in terms of career opportunities, getting exposure to different career in, in industries, and then uh, both by uh, doing informational interviews, uh, doing research, but then the best way to get the experience is, is, is to do it and to work in yes. the summer. So 
we, we, we try to help students secure uh, these worthwhile uh, internships each summer. So over four years or four summers where they can really figure out what they might want to do and what they may not want to do. And so sure. you know, it really helps them to, it does a number of things, helps them to gain confidence uh, in, an, in different work environments, helps them to identify areas that they might be interested in pursuing as a full-time career. Uh, it helps them you know, build and gain really important skills to make them more marketable candidates by senior year in, in college. Uh, exactly. So all of that. And then the last part is it's kind of a win-win because it gives students uh, a greater sense of purpose for while they're in college. You know, I'm, I'm here to, to learn and, max, and make the most of this experience, but also how does this relate to give me that preparation for the career that I want to pursue. And so, um, so I think that's why we go hand in hand with the career coaching and the college coaching um, and, uh, and hopefully having those support structures, you know, will help students to really make the most kind of thrive in college, not just get by, but thrive in college and then, uh, you know, be prepared because it's tough. I mean, obviously this year is probably one of the toughest years for college graduates going into a job market in the middle of a global pandemic. So it's tough. Yeah all the more reason why there's a need for support uh, to help okay. students. And, and in general, our students don't necessarily have the same type of, um, you know, professional network, let's say, or, um, that maybe more affluent students have. And so, you know, and, and for good or bad, you know, that can play a key role. So just helping students to, to understand um, and to be able to, through internships, for example, to be able to meet people in a field that they might be interested in learn more from them and uh, kind of start to develop a network that will help them, especially during tough economic times like we're experiencing now. Indeed, and I think the level of preparation is second to none. And I know that many of the underrepresented or underprivileged are uh, the student body, make up the student body at Eastside College Prep. and I think it's a testament that given the tools, the success crosses uh, economic as well as socioeconomic bounds, boundaries, and uh, it's, it's incredible. I think that if this model was placed uh, to every student in America, every student would be successful because to have two advisors or two coaches through college from high school to make sure that uh, the navigation through that collegiate journey is, is successful, that's big. And also, I think that there's a tangible component to having the students have the experience of working in an environment that they may find favorable and that is also in alignment with their studies. It takes the study off the pages and off the computer and make it a live uh, experience for them to be able to go into a workplace and then be able to make it relatable to what they're studying in school. So uh, I think that it's a greater added sense of purpose. Uh, it really does. It brings it to life of what, you know, what they're studying and how that connects, like you said, and, and, uh, and it, it just builds upon each other. So with that first experience in the summer, maybe they go back to the same place or maybe they, you know, take on a new opportunity, but it, it, it yeah, it really does build upon itself. And, uh, um, and it also, one of the things that's been great also is uh, we have more and more of our students after their junior summer, their, after their junior year in college, the internship they're in, man, many of them now are getting full-time offers uh, uh -huh. at the end of the junior year. So that it's a great situation to be in when you head into your senior year with already an offer uh, for a full-time job. And so, um, so, and I think, you know, companies are smart and many of them will, will hire out of their intern, summer intern pool after they've gotten uh -huh. to know the, the candidate. And so, again, it's just, we just want to make sure that our students have those same type of opportunities that, you know, any other student might be able to get have. I think that's great. So if we could back up, Chris, how did Eastside College Prep get started? How many students, where, well, <laughs> the reason why, what was the why and what was the where? So the why was, um, you know, we our schools in East Palo Alto. Uh, East Palo Alto has a pretty unique history, especially as it relates to education. Uh, when we started in 1996, there had not, there was no high school here for 20 years. 
uh, ever since wow. Ravenswood High School closed back in 1976. And, you know, going back to the 70s, this is in the middle of the uh, busing movement uh, and integration uh, movement, which, you know, across the country started in the East Coast and Boston and other areas and, you know, came out West. And, uh, you know, I think it was this good intentions, but in most cases, or at least here, with really poor outcomes, um, yes. you know, so that you basically had students from this community who were forced to be bused out of their community to attend high school, uh, high mm -hmm. schools in far more affluent neighborhoods where they didn't necessarily feel comfortable, you know, leaving their community and being on those campuses. And then they were being asked to compete against students from, you know, again, really wealthy back, uh, backgrounds who had come from uh, uh, school districts with better, re more resources. And so it was an uphill battle to say the least. Uh, and just, you know, just the, the burden on families to take an hour to hour and a half bus, bus ride each way just to get to school um, just made it you know, more challenging. And so as a result, there was this alarming 65% uh, high school dropout rate in the community. And so, you know, we really started with a very um, specific purpose in mind, which was to bring a high school back to the East Palo Alto community that would help students not only to finish high school, but to then go off to college and be well prepared to succeed once they get there. So everything we've done from day one has been really uh, aimed at achieving that goal uh, from uh, the teachers we hired to the curriculum that we've had in place and then to the support structures that we just talked about, that kind of philosophy of the combination of high expectations so that students would be really well prepared academically, but also you know, that support so that they can uh, you know, be successful uh, while they're here and then getting ready for college. So, um, so that's really the, the, the background for the school. We started with um, a pretty unique situation as well. We started with just eight students outside on a park bench. Uh, we oh, probably probably cool. shouldn't have started when we did because uh, we didn't have any resources to speak of. And like I said, we were fortunate to be in California with good weather to be able to start yes. that outside. <laughs> but yes. um, and then we were uh, able to borrow spaces in, from different nonprofits in the community that first year until we were able to move into a little house the second year. Um, but those eight students, I call them the grade eight, I have an yes. incredible amount of respect and admiration for them uh, because they weathered wow. some major storms to just uh, choose to come to a school that didn't exist or didn't have a campus <laughs> and then yes. to go through all the ups and downs of those first four years. And they really uh, blazed the way for the students that we have today. Uh, so they, you know, four years later, despite all the challenges that they encountered, uh, they all graduated from ESA, it all went off to four-year universities and really, again, set the example for all the students who followed in their footsteps. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we started and, and you know, little by little have uh, built up the school over the last uh, 25 years. And now um, it started with eight students. How many students on average each year? So this year we had 260 students uh, and uh, we're hoping to build up in the next two to three years to 280 students, uh, grades nine through 12. Uh, and then we're serving, uh, this past year, we served just over 400 uh, alumni. So alumni who are either in college or early in their careers. Uh, and this is where, you know, actively uh, supporting their efforts. So, you know, um, so close to 700 students a year, but- Absolutely, uh, they must be factored into that equation. Yeah. And the beauty of it, the beauty of it is, is you know, my dream has always been uh, for our students to be those role models and mentors for our uh, our, our st uh, future students, and so yes. we're starting to see that now. And so, uh, in, in a number of different ways, uh, we talked about the internship program, and so we're seeing more and more of our alums who are four or five, ten years out in their careers. Uh, hiring summer interns from Eastside and being the mentor for them in the summer. We're even wow. seeing some of our uh, older alums who are hiring our uh, college students for full-time jobs at their companies. Uh, and, yeah. and so that's just been this beautiful thing to see of, of, of full circle of uh, our alums giving back, but also uh, creating this Eastside network among the alumni yes. itself. Um, yes. and, and then for our current students, Again, there's no better role models than our alumni who um, you know, had that same, same experiences. And so this year, for example, uh, we were really excited to be able to welcome some of our alumni into our staff. Um, mm -hmm. We have uh, one new uh, alum who graduated from college who's now a new residential faculty member in the boys' dorm. And then we have another alum who has just uh, joined our English department 
as our uh, freshman English teacher, and she's also teaching some of the right. seniors. So again, that's just, again, I think we're going to see more and more of that uh, now that we're 25 years into that. And that's something that we really believe strongly in is, is really connecting our older alums with our younger students and, and younger alums. Yeah, because regardless of how long ago they passed through the, those Howard Halls, it always seems like yesterday when we come back to you. <laughs> and yeah. the, the level of familiarity, um, there's also for a hiring, uh, a hiring manager that came out of Eastside, the um, certitude of what type of education they had. Because a school like Eastside, uh, when someone looks at their resume after college, they're not just looking at which college they went to. If anyone knows about Eastside, they also know that it's noticeable uh, by its presence that they went to Eastside. So Eastside is basically uh, a form of a college. Though it's college prep. It's a form of a college environment because of the rigorous studies. And then you layer it with the college experience that the uh, students have when they become ready for the job market, they are, uh, I think, miles ahead, definitely. And we're starting with eight students and moving on to these numbers now. And uh, you multiply that by 25 years, that's a lot of students. And like you said, the network is being built and uh, it's a lot to take in how uh, impactful the students find Eastside to be, I know firsthand. Uh, but also, um, I think it's, a, it's, it's a very, very much a model in a lot of ways. Uh, one way in particular uh, is sports. Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so sports has been one of the great motivators for a lot of our students uh, over the years, uh, ever since the first year that we started the school, and that's just built up over the years. So I think, uh, um, you know, yeah, we, we started uh, with just, a small sports program because we had eight students <laughs> and so we're just a basketball program we've now added you know other sports for, for every season um but there's no question that sports uh you know has been a, a, i think a great motivator for students and hopefully uh it's in a, another classroom where students can learn you know important life lessons yeah. while they're also yes. um you know through high school uh and um and also develop those bonds with their teammates and, and that sense of camaraderie and, and what it is to be part of a team uh, so, um, yeah, so I think that that's been, been great to see that develop, like I said, with more, pro, more teams within the program over the years. Uh, we have currently 70% uh, of our students participate in at least one interscholastic sport. Many will do two or three. Uh, and so that's, um, uh, like I said, been, been, been great to see. And so I think just the, the idea of the sports program and along with the sports program, you know, we've added our, our fitness program to really de hopefully help students develop a healthy Lifestyle. So we've added a strength and conditioning program uh, with our strength and conditioning coach who works with both with the, the teams on sports specific training, but also on just general fitness for students who want to just get in better shape. Um, you know, we've added a, a yoga class. We have a dance classes now. Uh, so just again, trying to create the, the, the idea of just when students leave here that they're going to stay active and, and, and fit. Um, and then many of them will pursue, go on either to pursue playing sports in college or uh, at least keep that active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, um, the number of students on some of the teams are very small, uh, mm -hmm. eight to 10 on the basketball teams, and, and they've won how many championships? So the boys, have, well, the one of the boys won 10 CCS championships, and the girls. Well, the girls won two state championships, and then they've won, I think, three or four CCS championships. Yeah, so a lot of, lot of banners in, in the Panther Dome. Uh, but it is true. We, you, you have a disadvantage as a small school. So uh, where other schools may have 15 on a team or 20, 20 or no, multiple teams, we may only have one team with eight, eight uh, players, like you said. Um, so yeah. it's uh, – you know, it's uh, everyone. Everyone has to step up. Next, next person up. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but I think there is a lot of pride in, in knowing that as a small school, uh, that if you know working hard and working together, that you compete against. You can compete against the bigger schools and have a lot of success. And, and notable to mention that the recruitment is is for education, not for sports. And right. yet, and still, those that come for education find success in sports as well. Right. And I th I'm just a firm believer they, 
they complement each other. I mean, I just think that, you know, if, again, the, the hard work and discipline that you learn in sports can carry over into the classroom and vice versa. And it can be a great motivator for, you know, a lot of 14, 15, 16 year olds to, to being, stay engaged in the classroom as well. So I just think it's a, a win-win and, and uh, that's been really important. Uh, we've tried to f find other creative outlets for students too. So um, in the arts, and so, you know, over the years, that's been another real important outlet for a lot of our students, uh, adding our music program, our dance program, our art program, our photography program. And so you're just helping students to discover and develop their artistic talents, as well as their athletic talents, uh, to really create a, a holistic education uh, throughout their high school years. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that definitely, uh, I, I would agree with you that um, the scholastic and the extra curricular activities do go hand in hand because the way a person does anything is the way that they ultimately do everything. That's right. And, and also, um, I know the campus students, there's some um, methods that's used, the amount of cell phone time they have, computer time they have, um, sleep time that they have, and uh, the times that they wake up that they have, that all factor into the equation of having a successful uh, scholarship uh, in the making. Yeah, no, I think a lot of it's about just building uh, successful habits. <laughs> I think that we can all, uh, you know, I can, I'm still trying to build those habits every day, but uh, <laughs> we can all do that. So, uh, but yeah, I think that's just really important. I think, uh, you know, so much of this, whether it's being involved in sports and, and kind of through that discipline, understanding that, you know, the habits of practicing every day or working on your okay. skills is going to help you perform in the game or in the, uh, the habits of every day in the classroom and, and your homework and how you approach homework is going to help you, you know, be successful in, in your tests in your classroom. So, so I think, but, um, and in the dorms, you know, just trying to help students, I think, you know, especially for adolescents, it's just, I think we found over the years just how important it is for, for sleep and getting enough sleep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so just building that in with t time to make sure students get enough sleep, uh, building those habits, like you said, that, uh, you know, as we know in, in this day and age, uh, students spend a lot, well, we all spend a lot of time on, sc on the screens right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just, you know, helping students have that discipline to, you know, be able to have screen time during their free time, but also, when it's time to study and kind of compartmentalize, now it's my time to do this, then I'm really going to focus in on this. And so, um, and hopefully that will carry over to college. You know, it's interesting. I think um, a lot of our students have said, those students who lived on campus, which is about 40% of our students, uh, when they get to college or after their first couple of years in college, they'll come back and say that they're really happy, glad that they were able to live on campus at Eastside because it did help them. Um, at least many have told us that it helps them in terms of having that discipline to say, hey, now I'm in college. Nobody's telling me what to do. Nobody's telling me what to do to bed. Nobody's telling me to do homework during this time, but, but they've kind of carved out their own tutorial times or they exactly. maybe recognize, hey, getting sleep is important for me. I know how I feel when I get a lot of sleep and I know how I, don't, how I feel when I don't get a lot of sleep. And so yeah. Um, yeah, I think that helps when they're you know, on their own and uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's the, all that I think goes together. Yeah, I think that they've learned how to roster their time from mm -hmm. uh, the East Side experience. And that by extension through college, they'll be able to roster their time after the full college yeah. experience. Because of that. I mean, college um, is so challenging because you have the time management is so important because, mm -hmm. you know, you have more uh, well, I don't want to say free time, but you have less class time. So students yeah. could think that they have more free time, but the expectation is you have to do a lot more work outside of class. But again, you know, that's so uh, really it takes a lot of discipline on a part of a student who, and nobody's going to be looking after you. So until it's too late and you're, and you're, you know, you're not able to stay at the school. So, so I think that's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a important and a tough transition. So hopefully the students can develop positive habits while they're here they're gonna have a much better chance to be successful once they get to college. Mm -hmm. So there's a small pocket of time that's carved out for the students to sit around and communicate uh, that live on the dorm. Right. And I think that that, that translates into uh, um, a level of social skills that they can take with them through life too. In lieu yeah. of being on the screen, sometimes uh, they can sit and communicate and that you can see when they 
are in a position that they have to express themselves in public or other social settings. That's right. I mean, it's different components. I mean, uh, maybe I'll, I'll turn this around and let you talk about your lunchtime uh, discussions, but, uh, but also in the evenings we have the uh, community time. We're just trying to develop a sense of community, at least among each hallway, uh, but also an opportunity for students to uh, share kind of highs and lows from the day or any concerns and, uh, or challenges that they're encountering. Um, a chance just to have, we've done some mindfulness as well during those, that, that oper those times, just to, when students are so busy and it's such a, uh, so much on their plates, but just to be able to reflect on the day and, and uh, uh, also uh, kind of develop a sense of also gratitude in terms of what do we have to be grateful for, even in these tough times, exactly. in the middle of a global pandemic, exactly. you know, in the middle of so much social unrest and inequality, uh -huh. uh, but, uh, you know, kind of uh, figuring out, you know, our friends and our loved ones and who, who can we not only count on, but also be grateful for. Um, so I think that can also hopefully help uh, when we're dealing with such challenging situations. <laughs> exactly, and it prepares them for if ever running into these uh, challenging situations later on in life that they can definitely say that it's, it's, it's not a place they haven't been before mm -hmm. and been well prepared for before. The graduation was case in point. Um, this year's graduation, everyone stayed in their cars and came up to get their diplomas. And I, as a spectator, felt that it was very, very invigorating uh, to see how uh, uh, through this very unnatural situation where we had the pandemic, that the graduation was as spirited as any graduation in an audit auditorium could be. And you gave a beautiful talk about uh, a lot of the things that are going on today. And I think that um, I couldn't ask for anything more, but uh, you know, I'll take my hat off to you. Your, your speech was very, very, very impactful. I mean, I think for us at the school, it's more than just helping students to be successful in college. I mean, on a fundamental level, our goal and our hope is that we're really creating opportunities for students to be change agents in our, in our society because we definitely need that. And yes. for you know, students who might have in the past encountered uh, ceilings because of the lack of opportunities that they might have had or their families might have had the opportunity to you know, be able to go off to college, be able to um, have that preparation to pick and choose what type of opportunities they may want for a career, but also how they can make an impact in their community, whether it be in the, in the companies that they'll be working for, the organizations that are giving back to community. And so, uh, you know, at the most, again, at the most deepest level, it's really about helping our students to, you know, be able to be empowered by having the education, by having the, the skills to mm -hmm. have a voice, uh, have a voice, yeah. like I said, in, in their job, but in their community, uh, to be engaged in the community, um, because uh, you know, that's, there's su such a need <laughs> for uh, oh, <laughs> new voices and a need yes. for um, really um, leveling the playing field in terms of opportunities and really trying to uh, create a more just, <laughs> just society. Yes, yes, and I think that that voice, um, when you said uh, for them finding their voice, um, I love to think of it also um, with alongside of you, they find a level of certitude with inside themselves. And um, I think that's one of the um, uh, very, very great foundations to build change agents and individuals uh, in society that can uh, be looked on in a very favorable and noteworthy way. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, I wanted to just ask you uh, a question. If Eastside was able to be multiplied throughout the country, what do you think the outcome would be? Hmm. You know, we've, been, we've been asked that before and that, you know, when we t we've talked a lot about you know, would we try to replicate the school and, and create more east sides and other places? Um, you know, and, and we made the decision, you know, several years back to take a more longitudinal approach to really focus in on the job at hand, not just here, but then 
building out the program through college and beyond. And so, um, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, we, we, so we've tried to have that impact, but also the impact of just sharing best practices with other schools uh, throughout the country. And so we, we welcome a lot of uh, educators on campus every year, uh, some who are in school, some who are getting ready to start schools um, and just sharing what we know. I and mean, we're very transparent about what works for us and what hasn't worked for us. And in fact, on our website, we share our best practices uh, that a lot of you know, schools have used. And, and, uh, and we just, it's, we always like that dialogue because we can learn just as much from other schools as they can learn from us. Um, but, uh, you know, and so I think there's a lot of efforts out there uh, nationwide that are making a, a difference. Uh, there's not, not enough at this point. I mean, there's still a need to really have more opportunities to level the playing field for, for students uh, who, who historically have not had the same type of opportunities or who are dealing with an uphill battle compared, given the society that we live in. Um, but, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm biased, but I think that education is, is, uh, is, is key uh, to really not only create opportunities for students, but to help students to be able to be critical thinkers, to understand the environment around them uh, and how they can make positive change. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so I think that's, uh, um, you know, what we're trying to do, I mean, we, you know, we know that every year it becomes more humbling about, you know, uh, operating a school is, is challenging. There's so many parts to it. And, uh, uh, and we know, <laughs> you know, it's, we're kind of all consumed with trying to do everything we can for our students and our alumni. But I do think that there are um, other efforts and we do enjoy sharing uh, kind of our best practices with other schools across the country. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I can just imagine. I, I love the longitudinal, longitudinal approach because um, it made me think of uh, one of the sayings that I hold near and dear to my heart. It's not how good you do, it's how long you do good. Mm. And um, I think 25 years, uh, it's a testament to how good uh, Eastside is. And uh, even beyond that, I mean, you have to factor in the, all of the college grads. So it's 25 years now. Uh, times four years of this, 100 mm -hmm. years of knowledge that has been actually uh, imparted from the East Side um, culture uh, and permeates everywhere. So uh, I couldn't say, I can't say enough about East Side. I'm really, um, I can hardly stand my skin talking about East Side. I'm composing myself to tell you the truth. Uh, but um, if there was a good thing that a person school system could do in a day my view is to you know take a page out of the east side book and apply it and the success is almost guaranteed it's not easy it sounds just take a page it sounds easy but it hard, it's hard work it's dressed up in overall but the outcomes uh the outcomes based piece of it is is very very rewarding i can say that firsthand and um i thank you chris do you have a title that you go by at the school. Uh, so pr principal is my official title. Huh? We all wear many different hats here at the school. So, uh, <laughs> so but that's coach, the official title. Basketball coach or everything. <laughs> that's yeah. the nature of small schools. You have to, in the nature yeah. of small schools on a tight budget, you are uh, you know, taking on many, wearing many different hats. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Chris, a thousand thanks, man, for all that you do for this interview today and um, enabling us to you know, sit down and have a talk with you. I know how busy you are, oh, uh, but I really appreciate it. And um, if you ever get a chance to come back, we'd love to have you back. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, this model, you know, as we, if we can get you back and peel a couple more layers back, could be something that can help some other folks somewhere. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, thanks for inviting me today. To, and uh, really great to see you. It was a great, great excuse to have a chance to uh, catch up with you as well. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, we look forward to having you again and thank you so much. All right, have a great day and say hi to the family. Absolutely, say hi to all over there. I will. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.